So good morning ladies and gentlemen. This is the finished product of how to do a split nose bowl. We thought we'd show you the finished product. Watch the rest of the video. and We'll show you the tips and techniques you need to know to accomplish this. In essence, this is how you do a split grumman. Well good morning ladies and gentlemen. We're doing a nose bowl split on a two seat aircraft. So the first thing you do is you call up Fletch Air and you get the STC. Then you dig through the STC till you find the two pertinent things the drawing that shows you how things are laid out and finally to go cut the metal which will have to be trimmed to fit so we did that this morning we went over we sheared some aluminum so you can see what we did we laid it all out just like the drawing said we drilled all our holes we drilled the number 40 for the two leg anchors we installed those now once you've done that you've got the tape the tape goes on the sides of the nose bowl and you lay that out in an aesthetic line that you like you know, some people want it a little more up, some people want it curving a little down. Whatever the owner likes, we lay out the tape. Once the tape is laid out, then we come back and we put a score line at the head of the tape. Now, we've removed the tape on this side because as the next part, after you finish the plates, you, you push, well, let me try to get a little less glare. We push the plate into the fitting. And then what we do is we take a number 40 and we pilot drill this hole, clamping this very firmly to the nose bowl. Then we pilot drill this particular hole. Then we run a screw in from the back side. Now with the lip on the front of the cowling, this, the nose bowl, this can't move. And then we come back and put in a middle screw and this last screw. And now we're ready to come along and drill the screws on the outside. Drill all the way through. And now we begin the process We'll come back and we will countersink all these holes for a WA8 and then we'll be putting rivets through and squeezing the rivets. Once we have these holes all countersunk and ready to be assembled, this is already in place and ready to go, then we'll do the other side. At that point, we take everything out. We come back and we cut the cowling. By drilling all your holes ahead of time and mounting and getting it ready to accept the plate, once you cut the line it doesn't matter if you cook you cut crooked or not your cowling your nose bowl is going to fit exactly the same as it did before because you made all these holes while it was one piece not two so we'll come back and shoot some more video as we move along in this process all right now to countersink these what we do is we just take a much larger drill bit this is somewhere up near a half uh, actually some people will want to know it's a 26 64th not that it's matter what's important is that it is bigger than the dimple on the back of the WA-8 large area washer. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it by hand very slowly with the sharp bit because we don't want to do too much damage to the gel coat around here even though we do have a little margin of error because once this sits flush it'll cover a little multitude of sins and we want it to sit nice and flush so when we go to rivet it later just take your time by hand like this get a good sharp bit and now that one is laying perfectly flush. So we've done one. We have four more on this side. Then we'll go prepare the other side. And we'll be back later. Okay, here we are on the second side. And as you see, we've taken the metal plate. And we've gone ahead and we've put in three of the anchoring screws. Now these are pan heads now. They'll be countersunk through WH in the final assembly. But what this does is it holds the plate perfectly in place. Let me get back in my field of view. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pilot drill these other seven holes so we know where they're located. We're using a number 40 just for piloting. And then we'll be enlarging them to a number 19. Now when we flip it over, you can see that we've successfully pilot drilled them all. And now we are going to put a score line right here. This will be our final cut line. It runs right along the blue tape, which we can now remove.
and now we'll enlarge these holes to a number 19 which allows a number 832 screw to go through without any problems. Remembering that on these top holes we still have blind captures in the back. So you don't want to go too far through the fiberglass, you just want to go through it. These it doesn't matter, there's nothing back there. Now with those in place, all we're going to do is come back and do the countersinking again. And when we have the countersinking done, we're going to be taking out both of the plates. And now we're going to be cutting the cowling, then finally coming back and installing the rivet. So stay tuned, more to come. Okay, all the holes have been piloted. We've taken out the plates. You notice they already start to take their final bent shape. Uh, the most critical ones, these have to be a little deeper in the center because it's where you have the most curve. These are relatively flat. But we've gone both sides of the nose bolt. And now we are ready to take the cut, uh, take the um, saw and make a cut. And what we're going to be using, this is available at Hobby Lobby, uh, any of the uh, craft stores in your area. It's just a small little model flush saw for balsa, but it works out really good. Gives you a nice, it's one thirty second of an inch thick, so you'll make a very small thing. The trick is when you're making your cut, is you want, as we call that in the forum post, you want a very shallow angle. You want a lot of blade in the cut as you go along. This helps keep it straight so you don't go wandering all over the place because it is a very flimsy blade. Take your time. This is a flush pull saw, so we're only cutting on the stroke where we're pulling. So be careful. Take your time. That's the best advice I can give, and we'll be back in a moment. Well, here we are in the nose bowl split and we split it but the customer's being picky and he wants both sides done so we'll go do the other side now but as you can see by taking your time and using a shallow angle what I do is I cut a groove all the way through the gel coat first won't get any splitting and then I start one in and I work my way back up to the corner and there's a nice smooth line a little sanding and now we're gonna work on the other side be back in a little while so here we are in process on the second side and what I've done here, as you can see, I've taken the knife and very carefully worked my way all the way down the entire side of the nose bowl, and I've cut through the gel coat. Now, we did find out right here through the cracking, there's a, an old repair here, so that chipped away, but we have matching paint, not worried about it. And then now that we have that entire thing, we're going to work up from the bottom this way, single pulls, and cut our way all the way through this, leaving this little last nut to be the last thing that we separate. And so we'll be back in a minute when it's completely separated. All right, here's one little tip. After you've made that gel line, as you can see, we're, we've almost through the second side, but you always want to pull inward away from the gel coat so you don't crack it with this flush pull saw. So here I am just making one stroke. It's tough cutting through fiberglass, but this way I don't damage the gel coat as I cut along, and that's how I work my way all the way up here. So that's a little tip for a nice clean cut. Be back in a little while. So as you can see, we've now separated the uh, nose bolt into two pieces. And finally, before we go ahead and start putting the fasteners in, uh, put on a glove because it is fiberglass. And we're just going to come back with a piece of 400 grade sandpaper and just break all those glass fibers and get a nice smooth on all the edges. We'll do that for all of them. Then we're going to be riveting in the plates. Stay tuned. More coming. Okay, so here we are putting in the first of the two plates, and here's a little trick for you on the two-place airplane. This is a curve, so we take a number eight screw and a nylock nut, and we pull it down, and what this does is it holds it right in the curve, because the aluminum wants to be straight, and as you can see, we've already set this one rivet by squeezing. On this side, we're using the number large area washer on it. So we're just going to go ahead and complete up this side and do the other side and then the nose bowl has been officially split. All that's left is the paperwork. I'll be doing a 337 tonight. So this pretty much will finish up this portion. We'll be back in just a few. Well, here we are. We've now riveted the uh, fixed fasteners in. Uh, we're done on one half. We're going to do the other side, but it's accomplished the same way. We're going to put the um, 832 screw and the nylock in the center and squeeze them away. So I'd like to thank you for watching Grumman Pilots, our YouTube channel. 
directly supports the Grumman Pilots Association. Your GPA. Have a good day, and thanks for watching.